Ka Khalsa, Vaiguji Ki Fateh. Thank you, Ajuni. It's funny you said, I'd never say this to you, but I'm proud of you. So hopefully now we have that recorded and Pavi can play that whenever he wants. Uh, I was asked to say a couple of things and I, I even brought my notepad because I wasn't sure what to say. Because of Job, you know, even though I get to speak at a lot of occasions, a lot of the star bandis, <laughs> This one was special because you're so close to us. You, you're uh, honestly, it was as if I was writing something for my own son. And all eyes are on you today, right? You must be nervous. You must feel a little special, but get used to it because when you tie the star, usually all eyes are on you because you stand out. Sorry to break it to you, but you're never going to win a game of hide and seek anymore because people will be able to spot you. So the gurus had this formula. It's not by accident that we look like this. It was a formula. It was Bani, which is the teachings, and Bana, which is the external appearance. And when you combine those, there's the spirituality, which Bani gives you, and then there's the social responsibility that after you understand the teachings that you have to uphold in a world, in a, in, in, and that too in a dignified manner. The statistic is that 70% of sick children are bullied at school. And I challenge that statistic because I was part of the 30% that was, or that would never tell that they were bullied. And I'm gonna share, probably this is a story that I don't share much with Many people, in fact, I don't even think I've told my own kids this story, but I was one of those 30% who never told anybody, but was relentlessly bullied when I was a kid. 35 years ago, I hate to say that number, but it sounds so large, but there weren't that many six in this area. I was usually the only sick in my own old school, everywhere I went. And when I was younger, I thought it was normal that people made fun of you or forced you to go in a girl's bathroom because they thought you were a girl. I, I didn't really realize what was happening. But when I got to seventh grade, I started to understand, right? You start to come into your own. And in seventh grade, there's an incident, that's the last bullying incident that I remember for myself. But uh, I used to sit at lunch every day alone, alone at the long lunch table. And uh, I used to sit in the corner because I was always hoping that on the other side, since it's open, somebody would come and sit and I wouldn't look like a loser. And in the middle of the lunch, I remember every day, this was non-stop, seventh grade was probably the worst, but I, I remember bullies would come, you know, a bunch of kids, maybe five, ten, I don't remember the number. They would come and that was their job. They would make fun of me for the rest of the lunch after we were done eating. And it uh, uh, was not fun, but I, I was shy. I was not like you, you know, I didn't play football. I, I was a very quiet kid. I didn't come home and tell anybody. I just took it. And finally, you know, a couple of weeks later, I actually made a friend uh, at school. And that was a big milestone for me because I didn't have any friends at that time. And at lunch, his name was Patrick. He sat across from me. I remember this like it was yesterday because it's so imprinted. It's one of, the, one of the most impactful days of my life as a Sikh. He was sitting across from me. We were eating and, you know, just on cue, the bullies came and they started making fun of me. And I could see Patrick's face, and I don't think he ever experienced anything like it. It was normal for me, so I was just sitting there, you know, listening, taking it, you know, they would make fun of me, ball on your head, you, you know, you're, you're ugly, whatever they would say, you have too much facial hair, I, I don't remember all the taunts. But I could see Patrick's face. He, just listening to them against me, he, he almost had tears in his eyes. And that day, I don't know, I got some courage because maybe I had a friend or I thought I had a friend. And one of the bullies said, you're a loser, you don't even have any friends. And that day I had a friend, so I pointed to Patrick and I said, no, that's my friend. And then their attention went to Patrick, who was already traumatized and about to cry. And they asked him, they started saying, hey, are you, are you this guy's friend? Are you this loser's friend? And he was too scared. He said, no, I'm not his friend. And that, that day, sorry. I went home, that was the 
lowest point of my sick key life, I would say. I went home, I jumped on my bed, I closed my door, jumped on my bed, and had so much teenage emotion. You know, when you're that age, everything's a big deal, and, and not being accepted uh, uh, who you are is the extremely most difficult thing you have to deal with. And I remember in anger and frustration and, I don't know, so many emotions, I ripped my pratika off and threw it on the ground. And I remember looking at my pratika and cursing it, that this was the reason I was a loser. This was the reason I didn't have any friends. And in that moment, like I, I felt the worst, but something shifted. I started to question. I started to say, why? Why do I have to wear this? Why do six have to stand out? And that question started turning into research. It started turning into discussions with my grandfather. It started turning into curiosity, reading Sikh history. And that's, that's where I met them. I met the Sikh heroes. I met the heroes that we talk about in Ardas. Jinane band band katai. Khopriyan maya. Adyan al We say it, the ones who got cut limb by limb. The ones who were scalped. We say it, but we never think about it. And I started thinking about it. I started to understand there is a reason for this. Why did they choose this path, which I thought was difficult because I was getting made fun of at school, but they were willing to sacrifice their life for something this valuable. It intrigued me so much so that I, I just engulfed myself in Sikh history. And, um, and a few months after that, I was so inspired. I don't remember any bullying incidents after that. I took Amrit a few months later. and. Uh, felt wonderful as a Sikh. I finally knew who I was and what I stood for. So that was my personal journey. Um, but now when you were the star of your, people are gonna call you Sadanji. It's a, it's a term, of, term of respect, right? It's a term of respect you probably didn't earn yet, but you will. Because the way Sikhs acted, the way Sikhs lived in this world prior to you, the ones we talk about, they stood for what was right, regardless of what the cost. <laughs> and uh, I think it was a few months ago, your dad brought a brochure to my house, and we were, we were looking at it, a brochure of watches, right? And he, he asked me, what's the most expensive watch you think is in here? And I said, uh, $200, 500 man, 5,000, I don't know. And he showed me that the most expensive watch in that brochure was $1 million, right? And imagine if you had a one million dollar watch, right? I would cut all my sleeves off and I would just show my watch off if I was wearing one million dollar watch, right? But would you trade for that one million dollar watch your life? No. You wouldn't do that for ten million dollars because your life is more valuable. But the, the star was traded for somebody's life, for hundreds of thousands of people's lives. They stood for the Dastan, when, when they had to choose between life and giving up their faith, they chose giving up their life. So regardless of how successful you are, right, we want to wear the name brand clothes, we want to, you know, the same shirt that you can buy without the horse on the side is $5, with the horse on the side is $50, right, we want to wear the name brand. Whatever you wear, this will be the most expensive thing you ever have on by far because people have paid the ultimate price. Sikhs survive persecution. It doesn't make sense, but love never is logical. It doesn't make sense that Sikhs were hunted, they were killed, they stood out, but they survived and now Sikh is all over the world. And that's because Guru Gobind Singh said one thing, Jabla khasa rahe niara, tabla tej diyo mesara. That as long as you keep your distinct identity, your uniqueness, he will provide you the power. He will provide you the protection. And it's documented well in history how six use that power in the face of death, in the most horrific ways of, of torture, they withstood and, and kept their Sikhi intact. Right? They, until their last breath, they kept their Sikhi. It's even documented in World War I. I. I like to do examples outside. It's not Sikh history, not Indian history, but British history. In World War I, the Sikhs were sent to the front lines 
and they refused to wear a helmet. And the British said, you're gonna be in the front line. There's gonna be bullets flying past you. You're gonna hear them. It's gonna whiz past you. You're gonna get killed with a turban on. You need to wear a tin helmet. They refused. They were allowed to fight in the front lines with a turban, with their dastar. And they say, this is not me, this is the British. It's a British uh, general who wrote this in a letter back to England. He said that when the Sikhs step out of the trenches, they open their dastar and they shake it and the bullets fall out. They pick, the, they, they pick bullets out of their turban. Tabla tej diyum sara. That Guru is giving them that protect, protection. And I'm going to end. I, it's, it's a lot of thoughts, but I always end up getting jumbled up here. Uh, but I wouldn't be an Indian parent of Jyot if I was just satisfied with this, right? You got an A, why don't you get an A plus, right? So you're right now, of Jyot, in a few minutes, in a few hours, you're going to wear the star. And you're going to be like a student. Like, a, you know, I don't know if you, you've not been to a private school, but you know in private school kids wear a uniform. You're that student who wore that uniform and showed up in the morning. We're proud of you for that. I'm proud of you, extremely proud of you, because a lot of people don't even do that. You're a student who showed up dressed up in the morning. But I urge you that this is not the end of your journey. I urge you, and when you're ready, because Sikhism is never a, a religion of, of, of force. It's your choosing. I urge you to take Amrit. I urge you to take Khande Dipol that will make you register into that school and now you can enter, become a Khalsa because that's what's gonna give you the ultimate power and the ultimate lifestyle and experience as a Sikh. Charan Sharan Gur Ek Penda Jai Chal Sat Gur Kot Penda Aage Hoi Lethe which means you will take one step towards the Guru and the Guru will take hundreds of steps towards you. Today, you're about to take one step towards the Guru and I guarantee you, the Guru is taking 100 steps towards you, just like he did when I threw my butt on the ground when he took 100 steps towards me. Keep taking steps towards Sikhi. Keep following the recipe that the Guru gave you of Bana and Bani and it will make your life extremely special. It's gonna put challenges in front of you, no doubt. You're gonna get challenged like normal people don't because you're gonna stand out. But in those challenges, you will find the blessings of Guru. You will find the Guru's strength. And I guarantee you another thing, and if, if, you're, if you're not feeling this, you're not tying your dastar right, but every morning when you tie your dastar and you wrap it, you feel the Guru's hand coming on your head giving you that power and that protection. Why do you keep our Why do you keep the Why do you keep the I actually have dual roles now. I have to come back to my new, my, my basic role of pushing the program forward. Uh, the next uh, item we have, the next uh, we have is Manmeet Singh's Kirtan. I know everyone's been looking forward to that. I am. Manmeet Singh, our priest, Gaur and Jatha. Why did you Khalsa? Why did you Khalsa? Why did you Khalsa?